Eventually, I cross Kevin Nash at a TV taping. He said, hey, brother, Montreal in October, it's me and you. October or November, it's going to be me and you. It's going to be Big Boo Jack Knife, one, two, three. And usually you get the finish, you know, the night of the show on our shows and things like that. Even on pay-per-views, I never knew ahead of time if I was going to go over or if I was going to lose it. I never knew. So uh, I'm getting very worked out, really pissed off. Yeah. Because the click is getting strong on that time. You know, the click is like pretty much taking control of the company. And I thought that was very arrogant, you know. Uh, oh, 100%. I feel like if I would have get the finish, let's say the agent would have came to me at the, at the show in Montreal and said, okay, you know, Kevin's our champ. We're going with him. And I, we know it's your hometown, but we got to put him over because we're going with him and things like that. I would have been business. But uh, the fact that himself, he uh, bragged about, you know, I was, yeah. uh, then I was not happy anymore. I was really miserable. And then I was traveling with Sid at the time. And I told Sid, this, there's no way I'm going to put him over in Montreal. I'm going to refuse to do it. And if I have to, I'm going to quit. And I'm going to go to WCW. And then uh, when that night came, uh, Tony Guerrero came to me and he said exactly what Kevin Nash had told me like a couple of months before. Yeah. And I said, no, I'm not doing it. It's going to be a double count out or a double DQ or I'm taking my bag and you won't have a main event tonight. I'm going to go home. Fuck. Yeah. And then, but, but obviously for you as a professional, you know, it's not about going over or not going over. It's the fact that how arrogant he was that two months before he came yeah. and said, hey, brother, Jack, oh, big boot, Jack Knight, Jack one, Knight two, one, three. Two, three. three. Not, yeah, yeah. Like, I, dude, I, got, I could not blame you for that. That would be, like, I don't <laughs> think anyone could blame you for that. <laughs> I don't know. A fire came inside of me, you know, and uh, uh, I was on fire and I was so insulted and I was so pissed off. But the, the, my, my, I feel I made many mistakes, you know, I should have went to Vince with it, you know, asked for a meeting, sit down with him and tell him, you know, how I felt that it wasn't cool, you know, the way that things went and why would, would I know that two months ahead of time instead of the same night, you know, like, as usual and uh i was just green man i was just uh you know no experience no wisdom no knowledge no nothing i didn't know nothing i didn't know any better and uh, so i i refused and then you know they wanted to fight me right in the dressing room and i stood up and i told them like i told sean if you want if you want to swing me with your intercontinental belt don't miss me because i'm gonna kick the shit out of you and <laughs> he, he did not and nash uh it was okay he stood up to me he said so you don't want to lose against me tonight and i looked at him i said no i'm not gonna lose tonight and we went in the ring and then we started the match. And then uh, as we went into the uh, count out on the outside, then we started like to, you know, every blow was harder and harder and it was sold out in the curtain. The boys wanted to see a real fight, the shoot fight. And they all thought that Kevin was going to heat me up. And uh, so yeah. it was really a tough time there. Did, did time. he shoot? On, you said some hard shots. Would you say he shot on you in that that match? Didn't shoot like in a way that I didn't try to get me down or, or things like that. But I'd feel like, let's say, when you go forearm someone in the back or or just, you know, uh, elbow on the side of the neck. It was not no punch or anything like that, but everything was stiff, you know. And I would mm-hmm. stiffen back. So as, as closer that we're getting to the dressing room, uh you know you could hear the smack you know because it was like hard so he was hard on me i was hard on him and then uh yeah it was just a crazy 
period of time. Yeah. So what followed that after that match? Yeah, what was it? What was it like backstage after that? Because you know, yeah, you had guys. I don't know what Taker might have been thinking at that time, but I know we had plans. You know, like had like uh, guys thinking like guys like Shane Douglas that hated them were on my mm. side, or or Sid uh, Justice, or even back then. It's funny because after he did DX with with. Uh, with uh gun with Billy Gunn, but at that time, you know, I was traveling with the guns, uh, Billy and Bart and and uh, Holly mm -hmm. and and Sid. And uh, I remember at one point we were at the uh, Maple Leaf Garden in Toronto, and I was gonna go to Sean and just punch him in the face. And I had just crossed, I just went ac across uh, Kevin, and I was with like some friends too and then so kevin called the meeting in a room and it's like okay now we're all grown up and you know with enough it's enough and now we're gonna you know stop that 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 shit right now you know so uh but then we went to europe we went to europe for two or three weeks and i was going over every night after that I got fined though. I didn't get paid for my match. I got maybe a three thousand dollar fine or a two thousand dollar fine. I didn't. I got no payoff at all for my match against uh, against Diesel. And then I went. Hey. I went to Europe, and then I was going over uh, PJ Polacco. Uh, just incredible. One of their friend every night, and every time that they would come back in the bus, like Kevin. And Sean, they would be loud and saying, that motherfucker is going over again tonight. And he fucking refused to put me over in Montreal. They were so pissed off. So after that three weeks in uh, in Europe, we came back to, I think it was Cleveland, Ohio or something. I don't know. Like, yeah. uh, if you read Sean's Michael books, it's in there. Uh, they called Vince to a house show. And Vince flew. And uh, and they decided to uh, the clique decided that you know a lot of guys needed to be out of the companies, and they they threw a lot of name, and then eventually they threw my name in there, and then Vince said, "No, I'm not going to get rid of Carwellet. Um, I'm going to handle him, and I'm going to take you know I'll I'll work I'll work things out with him," and then. So it felt when I read that book, I felt good because I knew that Vince liked me, but um, they decided to job me out every night after that, you know, after that meeting. And I think it was cool because uh, when Triple H like uh, did the curtain call and then he jobbed out in 12 seconds against the Ultimate Warrior at WrestleMania, and then he was jobbed out for a full year. And he hated his shit, you know. He didn't say anything, and he just did it. He went through the motion, and eventually, you know, he came back on top. And I think I should have done that. But uh, after, like, so many weeks where I was just getting jobbed out, I just uh, I just went to WCW. I quit, and I went to WCW. Have you ever spoken to Nash? Have you cleared the air with him since? Oh, big time, big time. Because uh, we're probably very good friends now. Like yeah. I've, I've met him so many times. I think since 2009, like we have been like really good friends. And uh, every time I see him on any shows or signing, I always go by his boots or he comes by my boots and we always hug and we always have fun. Yeah. Uh and he understands, you know, more uh, my side of the story. I understand more their side of the stories. So we're able to, I'm able to put myself in his shoes and he's able to put himself in my shoes more. And uh, and he, he, he knows also that uh, how, how the clique was, you know, strong and controlling back then and arrogant. But... Uh, yeah. I you think know, you, grow, you grow up as well, you know? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was really cool. So he's a funny guy. He's a real cool guy. And I could have been on their side, you know, not knowing anything. You know, I don't know why I didn't like them. But, you know, it's just a matter of 
I got along good with Sid and I got along good with a lot of guys. Yeah. And I just saw them as enemies, but they could have been my friends because I was not better than them because I had the same attitude towards them that they had towards me. Maybe mm. I didn't have their attitude. I was not arrogant backstage. I didn't try to control the dressing room. I didn't have that power with so many guys. But, you know, I was not any better than them because I react the same way that they did act, you know. And mm. and they can blame me as much as they want, but I think Sean at first didn't want to lose against Steve Austin when Mike Tyson was there for WrestleMania. From what I understood, you know, from what I from what I I get on the net and things like that, like I think Sean had refused to job a few times, you know, against different guys. And I think he's, you know that Brett did refuse also, and probably Hogan refused to do it also. So oh, I think cool. it's it's a, it's a common thing in the business. But maybe my reasons weren't as 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 strong as theirs because maybe I was not as as val valuable as they were at the time that I made that decision. But to me, at that time, I think that was the best thing that I could have done. But uh, it was today. I can tell you, it was a big mistake. You know, I I know why I did it, but uh, with what I know today and everything that I learned, you know, because. Well, he, if I would have never uh, went, been over, been over to to go over this, you know, and to to talk to Kevin and to talk to to Sean and to become friends with them and to uh, understand, you know, that I went wrong too. At one point, you know, I had to look yeah. at myself in the mirror and then I saw that, you know, I was not, you know, I I, I said that uh, I was not only a uh, all about qualities, you know, had like things that had to work on. Yeah. And I, I think if I didn't do that, like uh, I would have never came back in that business. That's why I'm saying it's about achievements because in order to achieve things, you have to grow as a human too. You have to grow as a person. You have to grow as a, an athlete. You have to, to understand things, uh, you know, when you first break into the business, it's all about your ego. And eventually you learn that, you know, uh, it's not about your ego. It's about growing as a person. It's, a, it's, oh, the journey, it's the journey itself. So I've learned so much. Now, when I see you perform 